Thanks for yeah, that warm good. welcome. <laughs> so <laughs> we got the uh, we got a little bit of a hemp story here going on, and it's 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 kind of ironic too. But I, I want to get your opinion on the banking because of hemp versus cannabis, the difference. But this shows right here in the story here. Uh, you'll see how they're really trying to like dial in on the fine line of the differentiation. But anyway, here goes the story. A coalition of hemp cultivators in Alaska filed a lawsuit arguing that the state's new regulations for intoxicating hemp derived products are unconstitutional. The Alaska Industrial Hemp Association and four companies filed the lawsuit in U.S. District Court in Anchorage, according to news website Alaska Beacon. Defendants named the lawsuit are the Alaska Department of Natural Resources and its commissioner, John Boyle III, the state's Division of Agriculture and its director, Brian Scoresby, the state of Alaska, Lieutenant Governor Nancy Dolstrom. Under the state's new rules, hemp-derived products with intoxicating levels of Delta-8 or Delta-9 THC must be approved by Alaska's Alcohol and Marijuana Control Office. Certain hemp products for epilepsy and pain would also fall under the marijuana regulator's purview. The plaintiff's attorney, Christopher Hoke, said the new regulations would effectively make all hemp-derived products illegal. According to the filing, the four businesses joining the hemp trade group in the lawsuit are Primo Farms North, GD Sales, McDuro Corp, Alaska Edibles. State regulators across the state are taking different approaches to hemp-derived products, which have become increasingly popular since the 2018 Farm Bill, but aren't federally regulated. The Cannabis Regulators Association, which represents state regulatory bodies, asked Congress in September to redefine and create new regulations for the hemp-derived products. So that's basically the, the summary of it. Um, and... I, it sounds like to me, and I, I, I saw this uh, not too long ago, it seems like, I think it was in Arkansas, they're, they're doing a similar thing where they're trying to define exactly what Delta 9 is, what other cannabinoids are, what's illegal under THC cannabis laws, and what's legal under hemp CBD laws, which wow. ultimately sure. we're talking about like, you're talking about like, if you're comparing apples, it's like saying, okay, all Granny Smith apples are completely illegal. If you get caught with one, you're going to jail. But you can have, you know, gala apples and, you know, red delicious apples all Fuji, day. Fuji apples. Yeah. But it's like we're, we're, ta we're splitting atoms here. They're talking about, you know, Delta 9, the combined of Delta 9 plus the THCA. I know that was the, the one in Arkansas. So it's really... It's it's like without federal oversight or like a blanket law, it's it's kind of like what we were just saying with the banking, where it's like every state is kind of up to who knows what happens. Oh yes, I'm just supposed to say. Well, the problem Chris still comes from for the high at nine news hour. <laughs> this is Chris from Zotix at the high at nine news hour. Oh yeah, there we go. Hey, yeah. don't get scammed by those fake accounts out there. There's a lot of them on Telegram, Instagram, all these. We do not sell on online like that. So come through to California, get it in the licensed stores. Thank you. And only come to California and get it in the licensed stores. Stop thinking you're gonna go and get it online. That's stupid. <laughs> Unless it's THCA. Wag. Yes, but you guys do sell THCA online. Yes, sir. We have that online. Yes, that's it. That's online. Yes. <laughs> not the not the super loud. Not the runts. Not the gelato. Not the cookies. Come to the stores and get the good stuff. Get Shout the out to Astro, California. <laughs> yeah. You're already. The problem still comes from the simplistic definition of hemp. Mm -hmm. I mean, hemp. We knew what hemp was before they knew what THC was. Because if you smoked it, all you got was a headache. And you threw mm. that shit. Crash, okay, and then once they realized what THC is, they simplistically threw the line at delta nine THC. When in fact, there's all sort of tetrahydrocannabinoids out there, delta eight THC. There's a bunch of them, and it was simplistically rolled over to oh, it's still 0.3 percent THC delta nine. It's like you're you guys are stupid. You should have contracted a, or talked with an organic chemist to tell you that. You need to be more inclusive if you want to control the tetrahydrocannabinoids in here. California defined all THC, 
delta nine, delta eight, delta nine, delta ten, delta zero, whatever the fuck, you know, delta uh, THCA. They're all covered by our cannabis statutes. Everything else is within the hemp. So it's only 0.3% delta nine and all the other cannabinoids that you can put into the hemp products. Anything that's a that's a tetrahydrocannabinol is going to be covered by our cannabis statutes. I don't know how other states are doing it, but California took a shot at it, and I don't know that they got it right yet either. Now, De- I'll go ahead, Chris. Well, I, I was just going to ask. So from what I understand, California doesn't even allow smokable hemp products to be sold in the state, right? Well, they're, they've got a stick up their ass right now about all, all things that are not THC being smoked or vaped or anything like that. Um, California, right now, it's just hard to figure out what the hell California is doing. Um, Cause I got clients that are, that sell cannabis. I've got clients that sell tobacco products and nobody seems to have a clue what's going on in this state right now about these vape products and, and uh, other non THC products. So I don't know if I can answer that. I, in my opinion, I think we're seeing a low key extortion of all these companies made so much money off of um, marijuana products like the Delta eight companies and everything else. And I think that there's been so many new upstart companies that haven't really like, you know, paid the, the, the toll, you know, to cross the bridge. And I just think that this is just a little bit of consolidation, maybe for the larger corporations that have already established, established themselves within the states and within local governments. And they've already paid the toll bridge. Maybe this is a way for them to kind of, cause they're making us think about it now. So just so they can get, more uh regulations put on it this is just me just speculating this is just he just you know thinking that this is what i'm seeing happening i believe that the larger companies that have already you know paid that toll bridge i think that they're gonna they're waiting on the other side for the people that they've paid to kind of break up the small little companies while creating confusion and then you know probably or possibly even taxing them even more making it more difficult for these other smaller businesses to you know to cultivate to cultivate themselves and then allowing the larger companies that have already paid that toll bridge to kind of come along and just you know grab all of these little companies up and you know what i mean and kind of or even just say hey you guys are going to work under me and i already have the license you know what i mean like to, i believe that to some degree that that's what we're going to see happen and i believe the reason why they are still uh, stagnant on legalizing marijuana. It's not just because they want to give the pharmaceutical companies control. It's also because they have to figure out how can they put the money that they're making from the prison industrial complex back in. Because once they make it legal, it's going to hurt the prison industrial complex substantially. They're going to have to uh, retroact a few laws, allow a lot of people to seek relief on them, possibly remove a lot of felonies and other uh, counts and charges that was, you know, on people's jackets, as, as we would say. And um, I think that there, the holdup is that there's people who are well invested in the prison industrial complex that just understands how much money they get from having people incarcerated for marijuana use. So I think that those are the two main holdups that we're seeing. People could say that I'm wrong. Let me know in the chat. If you think I'm wrong, hey, I'm somebody that just bought his education like the rest of the people that go to school. But <laughs> <laughs> Dale, yes, Dale, it, uh, aren't, hood uh, D- D- Dale, aren't a lot of these uh, a lot of these kind of lawsuits kind of just th- not not making a lot of sense because the reality is that the new farm bill legislation is going to come out pretty soon. And then that that ultimately is going to change the whole framework for how everyone has to operate. And so is there a point to really filing these in the first place? Um, well, I mean, if I'm an attorney, I want you to give me money, you know, I mean, that, fair, that's fair, the reality fair. Okay. Of, of lawsuits. Okay. Um, so, so they're, ga- they're gaslighting their, 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 uh, their, uh, you know, well, I think also clients. too, though, it's the state's grab at trying to get taxes or like paving their, their safety oh. to, to like funnel them in while they can. Cause it's like, Hey, oh, we that's can't been compete the problem. With hemp. That's the problem we faced all across the country. Is that wherever they're going to make any any use of the cannabis plant legal, everybody gets their goddamn hooks out and wants money just to get started. As the dime goes by, they want their share of it. Um, the regulations are onerous, and it's it's just 
No, and it, 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 it bleeds. It's like even at, at my growth, like e- even down to the contractors that would come in, if you don't have the right one, they try to go, give you the cannabis tax and all mm-hmm. the way up to the city, the state, the lawyers, like no offense, but Everything. same. My lawyer would every little phone call, 15 minute increments, you know, were billed. So anyway, go oh. ahead. My, mine are six minute increments, but oh, wow. yeah, you know, get it, Dale. Get it. Yeah. Just so you know, we're in competition out there with these other, <laughs> you know, the laws of business. Okay. My time and my experience is my bread and butter and that's how I make a living. Right. But you know, to be honest, we're too goddamn expensive. We're a litigation firm. And once you get started in litigation, you better have a sugar daddy somewhere yep. or you're going to get bled. That's dry. that. That's a hundred percent factual reality. information right there, Dale. You are so, so right about that. But